At one time, Bream was believed to be the largest village in Gloucestershire. It is situated halfway between Lydney and Colford on the B4231 and is built on a ridge of high ground that provides fantastic views over the Forest of Dean. The main employment in the village in the past was mining, farming and forestry. Today with the mines closed, there is very little employment in the actual village, although there are several garages and shops. Bream is home to one of the male voice choirs that there is in the forest, and there is a brass band in the village. This is Bream Cenotaph, which was granted Grade 2 listed status by Historic England. Unveiled in 1921, it includes the names of 21 local soldiers who gave their lives in the First World War, and 25 service people from the Second World War, including two women. Now Bream is the first village in the Forest of Dean that I can remember visiting. Whether it actually was or not I don't know, but it's the first place I remember. So I thought it would be really nice to do a walk around this area today. I walked along the High Street to the oldest part of the present village which is where the High Street meets the Lydney to Colford Road. The old house Bream Cross originally bore the date 1565. Some of the houses have a date in the 1600s on them. The new inn near this road junction, which is no longer an inn but a private house, has an inscription on one of the fireplaces that is also on one of the tombstones in the church and is dated 1637. This junction with this hill behind me is my very first memory of Bream. Now I would have first come here, I think it would have been around the very early 1970s. But I seem to remember it looking very different to the way it looks now. I wonder if someone somewhere has taken a picture of it back then. If they have, I would love to see those pictures. Bream was host to maypole dancing, dating back to the 1600s, and it was here where the maypole stood. The original pole was eventually removed in 1925 because it was in the middle of a junction and got in the way of newly invented motor cars. However, villagers have recently tried to revive the village's old maypole tradition, and a new 50-foot pole was installed in a garden of the former new inn. From the Maypole, I walked up Lydney Road. At the top of the hill, I exited the village and continued following the main road. After about half a mile, the road came to the edge of woodland, where I turned off right along a forest track. As I headed on, I was looking forward to what I would soon be reaching.
In no time at all, the track led me to Devil's Chapel, a biological site of special scientific interest. It consists of wonderful landscape features called scowls, and are possibly unique to the Forest of Dean. They have traditionally been interpreted as the remains of prehistoric and early historic open-cast iron ore extraction, but an archaeological investigation carried out about 14 to 15 years ago suggests that they have a mainly natural origin, which has been exploited by humans. Types of scowl range from deep irregular quarry-like features to unstructured shallow hollows. Ecologically, scowls are now recognised as important wildlife habitats, being home to lower plants and ferns, bats and invertebrates. One of the most accessible areas of scowls is at Puzzle Woods near Colford, which is open as a tourist attraction. But the scowls here at Devil's Chapel were an equally wonderful feature for me to visit. This is a first for me. I thought I'd been everywhere in the Forest of Dean, but it seems that I haven't, because I don't remember ever coming to Devil's Chapel of the Scowls before. I may have done, but I don't think I have to be honest with you, because I think I would remember. But I'm so glad I've come here today, because it really is amazing. What a wonderful spot. Moving on from Devil's Chapel, I carried on along the track, which soon left the wood into open countryside. I turned right here to follow a path climbing up the edge of the field. Looking back, the views were outstanding. I entered a second field, where the path started to gradually descend again, as I made my way towards the valley ahead. Eventually, my path came out onto Parowell Lane. I turned right and followed it for a short distance until it ended at a T-junction on the edge of Bream again. Opposite the junction is St James Church, built in 1860 to a design by William White. I continued past the church and walked along Colford Road.
I've joined up with the Gloucestershire Way now, which I'm just going to follow for a short section. But standing on this spot brings back some memories for me, because it was 23 years ago that I was here with two of my Bristol friends, and on that particular occasion, I first introduced them to the Forest of Dean. I do remember around that time that one of my two Bristol friends was really pissed off with me because he was fed up with my big-headedness about the Forest of Dean and the fact that I could find my way around it so easily. So he decided he was going to challenge me when we came here. So the first time I brought them here, he actually led our expedition for a while. And although technically I had the last laugh on that occasion, I was a big head. I was a lot younger and cockier then, so but I was just proud of the fact that I, I loved the Forest of Dean so much and I did know it very well and it was just a wonderful place to show other people to visit really. From the Tufts, I continued following the Gloucestershire Way, a 100 mile long distance footpath which starts from Tutshill near Chepstow, runs through the Forest of Dean, as well as the Seven Plain and the Cotswolds, to end at Tewkesbury. The path descended to the road at Mill Hill, on a very steep double bend. Crossing over, I carried on following the waymarks of the Gloucestershire Way. As I headed on, I could see Hang Hill Works down in the valley ahead. The path took me northwards until I came to a yellow way mark, directing the route off to the left. Here I left the Gloucestershire Way as I took a track still heading north. This eventually came out onto a forest road leading from Hang Hill Works. From here I walked onto a road at the northern edge of Breen. Well, I'm nearly at the end of my walk now because I'm going back into Bream. I had only planned to do a really short walk today because, well, I felt like just doing a shorter walk today. But two, even though the weather is lovely at the moment, they did forecast rain today. So I thought I'd like to get a walk done before it rains, although it hasn't actually arrived yet, so I've been lucky. Anyway, so I'm going to walk back up the hill, back into the centre of Bream. I followed Park End Road, which slowly climbed back into the village. When I reached the junction with Whitescroft Road, I got some of the best views of the day. I could see Whitescroft and Pillowell nestling in the hills, with the village of Yorkley dominating the skyline.
Reaching the centre of Bream again marked the end of another fine walk in the Forest of Dean. Well, my short walk today was extremely pleasurable and it was particularly nice visiting Devil's Chapel and the Scowls because, as I said earlier, I don't think I've actually ever been there before and they were amazing to see. But Bream, what a lovely village it really is. Years ago, I was looking to move to the Forest of Dean because this is where my heart was and still is. I was trying to move to the area and find a job here, but there just were no jobs here, so I gave up in the end. But I still wouldn't be opposed to coming back to the forest to live if the opportunity ever came up. And if I did, Bream would be a very high contender as a place to live.